the Toronto Police Marine Unit often trains and works in conjunction with the Peel and Durham Regional Police Services, the United States Coast Guard, and the Canadian Armed Forces. Training exercises are done on a regular basis so that when an emergency occurs, rescue operations are well coordinated and run smoothly. I think most of you guys have worked with us. Uh, for those of you that, that haven't anyway, uh, I'll just explain what, uh, what we'll be doing. Typical uh, SAR sequence for us is uh, hoisting down uh, two of our guys, our two SAR techs. Uh, usually two single hoists, so two at a time. Um, <clears throat> often uh, we may do a circuit in between, but then we'll come back and we'll uh, hoist our Stokes litter down, which is our patient litter. Uh, after that, uh, <clears throat> we'll come back down, uh, bring the litter back on, uh, and then hoist the two guys up, usually by double up or two singles or something like that. So, uh, important thing for you guys to remember, of course, uh, we ask that you turn your weather radar off. Uh, um, no sort of HF uh, transmissions if you guys have that. <clears throat> we have, uh, we'll have five people on board, so in case of any kind of emergency, you guys know how many people we, uh, we have on board. Uh, when the SARTECs go down, there could be some static uh, from the helicopter, so you don't want to touch them, you don't want to help them. Um, we're going to be using guideline ropes, so again, you don't want to be pulling on the ropes. Uh, just uh, you know, do whatever the guys say on, uh, as they come towards you. And uh, if the helicopter does have any kind of emergency, of course, then we're going to be uh, sliding to the left. We'll be off to your, uh, I guess that'd be your uh, port side anyway. <clears throat> so we'll be off to your left side, and uh, if anything goes on, we'll be sliding to the left and uh, going to the water. <clears throat> and then we'll uh, hope you guys come and help us out to uh, recover the five of us on board or, or who's ever left. So. Today what we are doing is we are working with the Toronto Marine Unit uh, with our Griffin helicopter, CH-146 Griffin, based out of CFP Trenton. Today we are doing some boat hoisting where we put uh, two Sartex onto the back deck of one of their boats. And it's just practice for uh, in the event that a boat gets in distress, needs uh, medical attention, needs somebody to get out of uh, a boat, or they're disabled in the middle of the lake or a uh, harbor somewhere and we can get there quickly and put our Sartex down. They can administer a first aid that's required, and then we hoist them back up either in a Stokes litter kit or doubled up with a Sartec, and then uh, get them back to the medical facility. You want to try to practice for every situation you might encounter out there. Uh, so any type of training opportunity we get, such as today's training that we did with the Toronto Marine Unit, is beneficial. The only problem is, is, is our crew is the actual standby crew for the day. So if at any time we can get a phone call and uh, get tasked to go anywhere in our search uh, rescue region, which could be uh, anywhere up to Quebec City, northern Ontario, uh, just talking with uh, the Joint Rescue Coordination Centre in uh, Trenton, there was an ELT in Saskatchewan earlier today that they were thinking about tasking us to, but luckily they were able to locate the uh, emergency locating transmitter and uh, get the person to switch it off and find out that it wasn't an official crash. So anytime we can get out to train is beneficial, but at the same time knowing that we might not be able to get the training in because we could be called away for an actual task mission at any time is uh, crucial. and. Sometimes embarrassing that we can't maintain our training mandates, but everybody uh, understands, especially the Toronto Marine Unit, they uh, understand that you can try to tee up times and uh, dates, but uh, nothing will ever get firmed up unless you actually show up on scene.